Okay. So the first thing we did was our fast start activity. Today, we are going to look at data types. <laughs> data types really determine the size of the box that we're going to put information in and the kind of information that can go in that box. There are two kinds or flavors of storage inside of Java. The first flavor is by value, where we put information directly into a memory location and the variables attached to directly that information. Those are called primitive data types. The other flavor is by reference, where what gets stored in the variable is the address of the information in memory somewhere. And that information gets referenced by the variable. That's class data types. So we have class data types and primitive data types. We're going to focus today mostly on primitives. So this is the fast start code that we had. I assigned X, which is a variable, the data type of INT. That's integer. In mathematics, you guys might recall that integer is any positive or negative whole number, counting number, including zero. In computer science, it's not any value because we have a limit on size. There is a biggest value we can store inside of int. And we'll talk about that exact number in a little bit. System that out print line x print line allows me to send either a string literal, a string or a number. It's what we call overloaded. In other words, it takes different kinds of arguments. So in this case, the argument that it's taking is the x. And the x is an integer. When Java sees that x is an integer, it will display the value that's stored in the variable on the screen. This next line, x asterisk 7, the asterisk in Java stands for multiplication. We're going to talk a whole lot more about operators in a future lesson. What Java is doing here is it's going to do the calculation first. 9 times 7. And it's going to print 63 on the screen. So we get 9 for the first output and 63 for the second. So if we look at a particular data type, int, it's an integer, creates a value that is stored directly inside the memory location that value is pointing to. It's not a reference. It's a primitive data type because the information is stored at the location. So what exactly is an integer? Well, by default, it is a 32-bit signed math integer, which has a minimum of value of negative 2 to the 31st and a maximum value of 2 to the 31st minus 1. Now, the reason why the 2 to the 31st minus 1 exists is we have to leave a space for 0. 0 ends up being on the positive side. So we have one less value that we can do with an integer. Now, the reason why this is important is, for example, suppose you ran a big conglomerate like YouTube. And you had this system where you allowed people to like videos. 
And at some point, you decided that the count of like videos could be stored in an integer. Problem is, if you go over 2 to the 31st number of likes, you don't get to do that. It crashes. So yeah, that actually happened. Uh, I think it was on the video Gangnam Style that YouTube crashed because it got more than 2 to the 31st likes and therefore the coders had to flip out and say, no, 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 we got to change all this. This can't be ints. This has got to be some other data type in order to store a much larger number. Uh, the computer actually stores that number to the 31st as a binary value. Uh, it, I don't know if I have enough bits here, but 2 to the 32nd is 8 bits. A bit is a single 1 or 0. Doubles! Sounds like a weird name for it, but they're decimals. So we can use the double data type, also a primitive, to store negative and positive, so it's signed, decimals. Little side note here. There's another smaller container, smaller than double, called float. It's about half as big as double. Actually, it's exactly half as big as double, which kind of makes sense why we call this double now, doesn't it? Java programmers write stuff to make sense. Not so easy to learn, but they write it to make sense. Float is not on the AP exam, which is why we only cover double. So giving that context, it might make a little bit more sense. The double precision. Now, we got to be careful what we mean by this. This is not 64 bits is the largest or smallest value we can store. It's 64 bits to represent a decimal. Decimal points could represent small numbers and could also represent large numbers. We just have 64-bit precision. So if you remember in chemistry class talking about your scientific notation and you were talking about significant figures, the number of decimal places that you can have, this is more akin to that. The number of decimal places that you're allowed to have in order to express a number. It is significantly bigger than an int. So if you needed to in a crutch, you could use a double instead of an int, except there's some issues because ints aren't decimals and doubles are, which so we cause some problems. There is another data type, again, not on the AP exam, called a long, which is double the size of an int, gives you more space, and it's still an integer but it's not on the AP exam. So the AP exam limits itself to using ints and doubles. So you kind of have to think about that when you're answering questions for the AP exam. But if you're coding, you have the option to use several different data types depending upon what size information you want to put in there and what type of information you want to put in there. Character. Characters are kind of difficult to understand. Characters are 16-bit. That's how big they are. So that's 2 to the 16th. That's how much memory is set aside for them. And to you, when you look at that, the letter capital A, you interpret that and it has meaning. The computer does not interpret that. It's just a symbol. And the computer cannot represent symbols. What the computer does, and it all happens right here in this equal sign, there's stuff happening in the background that we don't see. It's that black box abstraction. We don't need to see it. Java says, oh, you want to store 
the character A in memory as a character. What Java actually stores is a number that represents that symbol. That number symbol pairing happens to be listed in something called the ASCII character set. There are 255 different characters that you can represent in the ASCII character set. Now that's the old days. We ended up needing many, many more characters. So they created the Unicode character set, which includes the ASCII character set as a subset now. So the numbers are the same for ASCII. It's just now a part of the Unicode character set, which includes like Chinese symbols, Arabic symbols, uh, includes special wingdings, you know, happy faces, airplane people. It all gets included inside of that Unicode character set. And I would probably venture to say that it might eventually include emojis if it doesn't already. There are 65,535 different possible characters in the Unicode character set. That's a lot of different characters to represent. Considering the alphabet's only 26, double it for capitals and some numbers, we're less than 100 different characters to do most of the English language. So 65,000, that's a lot. The percent sign is also a symbol. To us, oh, that's a symbol, it's not a letter. Java treats both of them identically. They're both stored as a number. So when you think of character as a data type, you have to think of it as a number, not as a letter. Here's an example. This is the ASCII code character chart, which is a subset of the Unicode character chart. You can look up the Unicode character chart. There's a whole website for it. One of the interesting things that I like to point out is that capital A is 65 in decimal. Now, if you look at these columns at the top, there's decimal, hexadecimal, octal, HTML, and then the character. Depending upon the language you're using, a different number system will be used to represent those symbols. But they are all essentially an equivalent mathematically symbol. And what I mean by that is the number 32, for example, in decimal is the same value as the number 20 in hexadecimal. It has to do with the basis and how that number is calculated. And it's the same number as 40 in octal. We think in decimal, which is why the decimal column is there, because it makes sense for us. The computer doesn't. The computer thinks in binary. The closest binary equivalent is octal. But as computers got more powerful, we jumped from octal to hexadecimal, which is base 16, which is a power of two. So. Okay, now let's talk about the Unicode character set. I have two links here. Uh, this one goes to the actual table, if I can get the link to work. If not, I'll just copy it and do it this way. Notice the EN after it, that means it's in English. New tab. I got to press enter. Oh, no, nope, there we go. So you can see now, these are, oh, they do have emojis. This is the full list of all possible characters. So you can see, if we wanted to look up what a smiley face was, the Unicode character number is 1F642. Now notice that's one extra place value. So they added more since I last looked at this. There's another place value. Each of these are powers of 16 place value. So 16 to the zero, 16 to the first, second, third, fourth. So 16 to the fourth. 
is the number of digits that we can get. So the biggest number would be F, 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 F. And they have all different languages and alphabets, holidays, all kinds of things. It's a Unicode character set. So if you ever want to look it up, you can look any symbol whatsoever and get the interpretation. Java cannot do emojis. Java is limited to that 2 to the 16th, so it can't do this. It's only 16 bit. This is much bigger than that. Okay, go back to our notes. Strings. Okay, this is a little different. Strings are not primitives. They're class types. A string creates a location in memory of a particular size. Then the address of that location is stored in the variable first name. So first name doesn't point to the actual string literal, mossy. It only points to where in memory, doesn't even point to, it has the address of where in memory that string literal is located. That's how all class data types work. There is a special note for strings. Strings, because in Java they use them so often, they created a special thing called a string table or a hash table for strings that keeps track of any strings that you create. It's a special spot in memory. And what it allows you to do is reuse strings. So if I created another variable called last name and the person's last name also happened to be mossy and it was mossy mossy, then Java would just point to the string literal mossy twice. That doesn't normally happen with objects and classes. Normally, they're two separate things with different information. They're separated. That's called encapsulation. But with strings, because Java was written to make it more useful and not so much um, easy to understand, they created these string tables to allow it to run faster. The string tables and that information is not on the AP exam. We're going to just treat all objects the same, but it does create some issues when we do coding with strings. And we'll see that in one of our examples. If you wanted to know how big a string was in memory, I had done some research and I'm not 100% that this is accurate, but it's close. So we talked about precisions for integers and how much space there are for doubles. Well, strings, you take the number of characters that are in the string literal and you multiply it by two. Now there is a maximum number of characters for Java, a maximum size string it can store. I think it's 255 characters, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's 255 characters. So you would take 255 times two. Then you add 38. Why 38? Well, there's some things that come along with string, some special features that you have access to that we'll talk more about later. Some special methods that we can do with the string. If the result is not a multiple of eight, then you have to round up to the next multiple of eight and then the result is generally the minimum number of bytes taken up on the heap by the string. And when they say heap, that's that string table they're talking about. It's not normally how we store it in memory. Again, none of that's on the AP exam, but years ago someone asked me the question and said, how big is a string? And I felt the need to go find an answer for them. So that's the best answer I could find if you're at a cocktail party, drinking some soda, there you go. Now you got a cocktail party answer. <laughs>